Welcome back to Optimal Play, where we have barely scratched the surface of all the new Arkham cards that just came out in these Investigator Starter Deck packs. My name is Brandon. I'm Steven. And yeah, we're still here recording this on launch day, right? <laughs> on on the yeah. night that these came out. We're not going to make th make it all through. Uh, not going to make it through all of them tonight, despite my joking about it last time. I have switched from whiskey to beer to <laughs> increase my odds of making it through this next video. Cheers. And, uh... Um, yeah, so we started in our previous video, which since I have become a master of YouTube these days is nope, nope, uh, there, damn it, there, right up there, there's a link to that video. It's, I, I think, think you're, I think, I think you're on the left side, though. Yeah, I'm on the left, I'm pointing to the upper right corner, right? Yeah, but that's on my side, so I have to point it. I, I have to. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, if you could do it, for, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, so at, at some point during that mess, there was a link to uh, the video where we introduced Jacqueline Fine, the new Mystic Investigator, and went through the level zero deck that was ready to play out of the box, which is how these new products work. And then what's also included in the box is a bunch of new cards level one and above that are intended to be kind of um, suggested upgrades for her, or if these are the only cards you own, <laughs> um, all of your upgrades for her. So without further ado, want to give us the first card? Sure thing. Uh, this is Eldritch Inspiration level one, uh, which we've only ever had a level zero version. Uh, so it's zero cost. It's got a will and two book icons. It's a spell and a spirit. Fast, when you play when you would resolve an effect on a mystic card, that triggers, quote, when, if, or after a chaos token is revealed. Either cancel that effect or resolve it an additional time. Okay. Very similar. So I think the level zero, and maybe you can, can verify, I think the level zero specified, like, tr play when you would resolve an effect that triggers on, and it, like, lists skull, tablet, elder thing, right? Yeah. And then this one is just an effect that triggers based on a, a spe any specific token. Yeah, so I guess this also works to cancel the new cards that yeah. trigger on an Elder Sign. Yeah, so the new spells that we saw, the level zero spells, like Azure Flame, um, oh, I've, I've got them right in front of me, I have no yeah, excuse, yeah. Ineffable Truth and Clairvoyance. Uh, they all work similar to Shriveling, Rite of Seeking, and Mists of uh, uh, Rilia, but... They actually have their backfire effect if you draw an Elder Sign, a plus one or a zero. And so this now works on those as well as the types of spells that, that, that Elder's yeah. Inspiration always worked on. It also, um, the original one was only when, this one adds if and after, which I can't off the top oh. of my head think of the difference, like uh, what cards that that enables, but I'm sure it does enable something. Yeah. Sure. I, I couldn't tell you how that matters off the top of my head. Um, it's interesting because this almost just seems like a very subtle, like almost errata to this card, right? <laughs> it's just making it, it's, it's expanding the design space that this card covers. Like now there are spells that care about different tokens. So there's a version of Eldritch Inspiration that cares about spells that care about those tokens. It's kind, it's kind of silly to me that this one costs an experience point. Well, the two books, honestly, are pretty... That's actually a pretty substantial upgrade. I feel like hmm. uh, just tossing a card for two icons always feels so much better than tossing it for one. True, um, yeah. So the one XP doesn't sting that bad. I think that they probably recognize that the original Eldritch Inspiration doesn't synergize with the cards in this deck, so they couldn't include it. <laughs> all right. It's pretty, it's pretty much like the old Eldritch Inspiration, which was kind of just all right. It just works with the new stuff. Yep. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, another familiar face, the Grotesque Statue. This one is a level 2 Mystic Asset, which I think makes it a lower level option compared to what we had in, I think, the Core Set? This is, uh, a, this is an old we, school card. It was pretty old, uh, like Dunwich or Core Set, and I think it was 4 XP. Uh, yes, yeah, I think the last one was level 4. So this one is an item and a relic. It takes up your hand slot. And it says it uses three charges. If Grotesque Statue has no charges, discard it. 
As a reaction, when you would reveal a Chaos token, spend one charge. Reveal two Chaos tokens instead of one. Choose one of those tokens to resolve, and ignore the other. Does this just have one less charge? That's what I was thinking. It seems almost the same. It seems very similar, but Grotesque Statue, as a level 4 card, it felt really good when the card pool was small, when there were not very many options, but it has not really kind of stood up to the test of time as being like worth 4 experience. Um, so maybe... So this card has 3 downgrades, but they're all small. Okay. One less charge, costs one more, mm. and uh, it has a will and an agility instead of a wild. So like, None of those things individually okay. is a big deal, but I could see the three of them together make it a worse card. Yeah. Yeah, it's a worse card, undoubtedly, but now that this is an option, I would be hard-pressed to take the level four over this, I think. Okay. Or, like, it just imagine if this was in your deck, would you, is, is upgrading this to the level four version what you would spend your experience on? I don't think so yeah at the very least i think i would almost always get this version first and then i would do the 4xp version at the end of the campaign if there was nothing super important yeah yeah i'd say so um but at this point i don't know there's so much to spend xp on that i almost never get to that like that that oh uh, i have all this xp and nothing to spend it on um experience i find i'm getting that less and less often <laughs> Yeah, although when's the last time that you played like a double arcane research mystic throughout eight scenarios? Um, pretty recently. Although it was Oh well, actually no, the last time I did that it was Patrice, so she did not have all that many mystic <laughs> options. Yeah. <laughs> I still ran her with uh because I wanted the trauma, I was playing Desperate Patrice. Yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> um Okay, yeah, I think that this is kind of it, it it kind of rejuvenates this card, right? I think that this is going to get it into a lot more decks when it had been kind of fading from uh, the metagame, for for lack of a better term. Yep. Cool. Uh, hey, uh, the robes. I like these. Yeah, so Robes of Endless Night, level two. Cost two, so one less. Uh, when you play a spell card, exhaust Robes of Endless Night, reduce the spell, uh, the cost of that card by one. Playing that card does not produce attacks of opportunity or provoke. Uh, that's a, and still too soak, uh, but that's a substantial benefit, right? Like yeah, uh, yeah, I'd say so. So like two XP for a discount of one is fine. It's not enough to be worthwhile, but then being able to play any spell without provoking attacks of opportunity, um, that seems really good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's definitely been times when you're like, do I, like, I want to investigate, so I want to play Rite of Seeking, but do I need to play Shriveling just in case I draw a monster? Um, so this lets you do both. Like, it lets you play Rite of Seeking and investigate this turn, and then next turn you still play Shriveling and uh, fight the monster that you just drew. Um, yeah. And there, you know, how many times have... Uh... I keep forgetting the name of the new evasion spell, Ineffable Truth. Uh, but how many times have you, like, wanted, had a Miss Cerulea in your hand and an enemy on you right now? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, I want to I wanna play that Miss Cerulea, but that Pit Viper is going to poison me if I do. Yeah. Uh, this gets you out of that mess. I think it's real good. Yep. Yeah, and... Yeah, I, I found the original a little disappointing, but I think as long as you upgrade it into this pretty quickly, or skip the original and, and buy this for your deck pretty pretty quickly, I think this is really good. Yep. Sweet. Um, Hypnotic Gaze, level two. Okay, so this was the level zero version was included in the Jacqueline deck, but this is a card I've never been glad that I put in a deck. <laughs> uh, this one... It's a spell. It's fast. Play when an enemy attacks an investigator at your location. Cancel the attack. Then reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it has a skull, cultist, tablet, elder thing, or autofail symbol, deal damage to the attacking enemy equal to its damage or horror. Okay, so it's one cheaper. I can tell that. Uh, yeah, I see, I see you looking for the original. Yeah. Probably, probably right in front of you because it was in Jacqueline's deck. Uh, is there anything different in this text? Yes. The... the... The bounce back is slightly different. It's 
The original was deal the attacking enemy's damage to itself. This is deal damage equal to its damage or horror. So you get to pick mm. the monster's horror instead if it's higher. Okay. So a lot of the time, like, I mean, a lot of a lot of monster or a lot of enemies are like one damage to horror or vice versa. So this lets you take the two instead of the one. Mm -hmm. Or in the really rare situation where it's two or three horror and no damage, this lets you actually utilize it. Okay, it's subtly better. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this makes it into most decks still because the idea of well, it's, you know, you have a one in third chance of doing this damage is like not that good. But if you're manipulating the chaos bag, yeah, sure. Okay. And the two the two costs. I mean, one of the major problems of hypnotic gaze was just too expensive. So. so expensive, yeah. And this makes it still it's more expensive than dodge in guardian, which just flat out cancels an attack for one. But then it has this, but then it has this upside. Yeah, I'd say it's more comparable to dodge. Dodge is a level zero card. I still think it's better. <laughs> but this like this puts it in the realm of taking it out of the binder. Now, also, though. let's not forget it's one more thing that Patrice can use Arcane Research on. Two two Ooh. XP Mystic spell. Yeah, but you're not putting Hypnotic Gaze in Patrice. It's such a situational event. You're just gonna discard it. Every it's got it's got Every two it. it's got two agility icons. Oh yeah, for all those agility tests you're doing with the priest. Yeah, she's a <laughs> she's a, a survivor. She does agility stuff. Sure, she does. <laughs> um, I don't know. I whenever I've played Patrice, I've used Miss Aurelia to evade with willpower, but that's just me. Um, huh? Okay. Uh, whose turn is it to read? This is a surprise. Uh, I've lost track. I think it's I don't yours. Know. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Gut. This is guts level two. Whoa. Yeah. Purple and guts. Just like her signature, this card is strangely purple in a way that <laughs> yeah. is weird and uncomfortable. Um, uh huh. So it is three will icons, uh, innate and developed. I think just like the original, max mm -hmm. one per skill test. If the test is successful, draw a card. New text. Two cards instead if it succeeds by two or more. That's hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. It's cool. Ish. Two XP for one extra icon and a conditional extra draw. Yeah, I mean, three icons. I don't know. That's. There's a lot of like situational three icon cards, so to have a guaranteed three con three icon seems yeah. very good. It's interesting that this is in this pack and original guts was not in Jacqueline's deck. But yeah. okay. I mean, like yeah, it's it's uh, inarguably a card that you'll be happy to have in your hand anytime you draw it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's gonna be a priority to spend your experience on, I'm not sold on it. What do you think of this? taking a neutral card and making a mystic version of it. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, it kind of indicates like these special um, that everyone gets access to the basics, but that like certain classes are better at like the more advanced version. So makes sense. Yeah, I'm actually, I think I like that. I think that's a kind of cool, like I always liked the, um, the, evolutions the the upgrades of the multi-class cards i liked the idea of having two different classes have versions of a card and then you got to kind of highlight the subtle differences between the classes strategies with that um so i think this is another cool way of showing like mystics like this was neutral but it's really kind of plays into mystics wheelhouse and so mystics specifically can spend experience to upgrade it i actually think that's pretty cool i'm just not sold on the card being all that good um now, here's a question. Do you think survivors get unexpected courage? Yeah, I'm I'm I've got to think now that all five of the like core set neutral skill cards are in these five packs, right? So the question is, yeah, it's got to be survivors get unexpected courage. Rogues would get uh manual dexterity, guardians would get overpower, and seekers would get perception. Perception. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's the that's the prediction. 
But if they are all like this, where they're all a third icon and a conditional draw one more card, I don't think I'm going to be that excited about any of them. I guess Unexpected Courage can't be that. Yeah. It could, but it's it doesn't connect in the same way that the other four do. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I I like the playing the playing with the the class color. I don't. I'm not excited about the card. The last thing before we move on is I'm trying to look at the art and just just because the last time we saw the same named card in two classes, it had changes to its art. I don't see a difference though. Do you? No, but it, somehow it still looks very different being purple. <laughs> Being in the purple frame does kind of, it makes the, the color pop a little more, really, because this greenish tint that this card already had kind of blended right into the neutral frame. So, yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. But I do wish that it had like a little, you know, I, I wish that the gun was enchanted or <laughs> I, <don't know>. yeah. <laughs> I wish that it had that subtle difference in art that is so cool about those those uh, cards from the Circle Undone that had the different versions in different classes. Totally. Okay. Uh, we've got Azure Flame level 3 here. So this is a direct upgrade of the new spell in Jacqueline's deck. It uses 4 charges, uh, costs 3 excuse me, costs three resources for this uh, asset in your arcane slot. As an action, spend 1 charge to fight. This attack uses willpower instead of combat. You get plus 2 willpower and deal plus 1 damage for this attack. If an Elder Sign plus 1 or 0 token is revealed during this attack, take one damage um this seems exactly the same with one more charge and plus two willpower does that sound right to you uh it's same number of charges this oh it is the same yeah. number of charges. it's identical as shriveling three okay yeah which all right considering how similar this card was to shriveling i guess that makes perfect sense <laughs> any uh anything to to say on this no, I mean, just like shriveling, you'll probably just upgrade these step by step, you know, like the plus mm -hmm. two does make a big difference because, you know, it means that if you haven't found your Holy Rosary yet or whatever, you're still very likely to succeed. So I always find it a pretty important upgrade. That's a good point. It, even though it's not an exciting text, like piece of text to read, the plus two willpower is pretty clutch. Raising that 5 to 7 means that you're going to hit most of the time, even against pretty tough enemies. Okay, cool. Um, more, more upgrades to spells. Yeah, so Clairvoyant, 3, uh, cost 4, 3 charges, you get plus 2 will. Uh, what's weird about this is that I think the Rite of Seeking upgrade I thought was 2 XP. So this seems like it's just 1 extra XP for no reason. Um, uh, oh, compared to Rite of Seeking. Okay, I was going to say, it's the same number of XP as the Azure Flame upgrade. Yeah, but like with Azure Flame, it's basically the exact same upgrade as Shriveling 3. This one seems to be one more XP than Rite of Seeking 2, and I don't know why. Hmm. Uh, yeah, maybe just for consistency across the cards in the pack. Yeah, so that makes me not that excited about it like i would almost go from clairvoyance to right of seeking two or something unless i was on arcane research i don't know yeah yeah you might do that go from clairvoyance to right of seeking two um the only thing is there's still half of the cards in this pack to go so if there's a clairvoyance five then yeah. that's a reason to stay on the clairvoyance train right yeah definitely hmm um Okay, and behind that in the pack is Ineffable Truth, level 3. This is the card we saw in her original deck that is the Evasion spell, and it looks similar. Level 3, it costs 3, uses 3 charges, and plus 2 will for these evasion attempts. Uh, you still lose 1 resource if you draw one of the best tokens in the bag. Um, sure, yeah, it's another, it's another solid upgrade. I think that, I think that the plus 2 willpower is possibly worth three xp on on any of these because that's such a big difference yeah <laughs> yeah and miss actually had a weird uh level two version that was plus one will so it was mm. different it was a little different from both shriveling and yeah. uh right of seeking um uh, but it only cost two so that was a weird one where like it made the cost go down, but only increase the will a little bit. Hmm. 
Or I know, actually, sorry, Mist was always two cost. Never mind. I thought Mists was the one that only had a level four upgrade, and then two just came out in Return of Forgotten Age. Two, that... two only, ju- yeah, exactly. Two only yeah. just came out, but it is out now, and right? Yeah, it only gives plus one will. Okay, okay, weird. Yeah, I have not had a chance to play any of the Return of Forgotten Age cards yet. So, it, it also has five charges. I guess is the other thing that the oh. two XP version that one does. That seems better than this then. <laughs> But this does have that different, that, it, it does have the different upside. It deals damage. It, like, this is more different from Mists of Rilia than the other two are different from their kind of corresponding spells, right? Because this has yeah. the potential to deal damage instead of an extra move. So I don't feel as good about comparing them to, like, here's what the yeah. version of that other spell at the same level does, just because it is a more significantly different effect yep. that you probably want in different decks. Um Okay, cool. Yeah, I think any of these, I think as you level up your Jacqueline, if you're using this card pool, it's a pretty early decision of like, well, am I fighting? Am I investigating? Or am I running? And and you level up accordingly. And I'm guessing that's kind of the intent here. Yep. Um, Uh, Okay, what's next? The next card is level four Arcane Studies. Wow. Which is still two costs, just like the original. Mm-hmm. Um, it uh, has two will and two book icons, which is I think is just like the two XP version from Return to Night of the Zealot. Um, and strangely enough, it has uses two resources. Replenish these resources at the start of each round, uh, and as a fast action, spend one resource in your resource pool, uh, or from Arcane Studies, you get will or book. So basically, I guess you get two free mm-hmm. boosts every turn. And then you could spend more. Yeah, it's kind of like a mini Preston or something, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get this little income that gets placed on the card, and you can spend it for a limited period of time. And on uh, in this case, on this specific limited purpose, I think this might be really good. Yeah, um, I mean, so if you compare it to say Recall the Future, which is also two cost, but it's less XP. I think it's two XP. Mm-hmm. That one sometimes gives you plus two, but only if you like hit the token. Um, this one is basically always giving you plus two every single turn, and you have the flexibility to spend more. Um, yep. So that seems like a substantial upgrade from. And you, uh, and you can divide that plus two between multiple tests and multiple yep. types of tests. Yep. So, um, yeah, it seems good. Yeah, it's maybe not crazy strong for a level four card. Like a lot of the, the the baseline for talents is kind of that like plus two per turn, and it kind of lines up with that, but is a little more XP than yeah. As as you mentioned, uh, recall the future, um, not safeguard, well prepared. It generally gives you one or two a turn, right? Like there's yeah. a lot of talents that kind of fall into that. Like you get about uh, about one or two each turn, and this falls in there, but costs more experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but it offers that flexibility where it's kind of like one of those and arcane studies from the core set, like stapled together onto one card and you get both. Yeah. And that's interesting. I don't know yeah. how often I'm going to spend four XP on this, but I think it's a cool card. Yeah. And I think, I mean, maybe there'll be some more kind of big money mystics. Um, I know Dexter is going to come out who has access to rogue cards, which mm-hmm. always helps make you uh, rich. Uh, we had that new voice of Ra that might help making people rich. So yep. there, there might be some more richer mystics. Yeah, yeah, maybe money mystics are becoming a little bit more of a thing here. Hmm, neat. Um, next up we have a level four recharge, which is a zero cost mystic event with the three willpower icons. So it's kind of good no matter what. Choose a spell or relic asset controlled by an investigator at your location and reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If you reveal a skull, cultist tablet, elder sign, or autofail symbol, add one charge to the chosen asset. Otherwise, add four charges to the chosen asset. So this is an upgraded version of Recharge, which was level one or two. Mm-hmm. And what stands out to me, in addition to I'm pretty sure this has more icons on it, this... Uh, I think the other one did three or zero, right? Depending on what you drew. I think it Does did that sound three right? or discarded the card. So worse than Oh, zero. it destroyed the asset. Yeah. Versus this one, instead of like, 
huge success or huge failure. This one is like even huger success or small success. Yeah. Uh, this seems really good. I think that if I think that it's kind of a well, no, I think it's a good upgrade from its old version and also in a vacuum. I think this is also a pretty good level four card. I think this is really powerful. Yeah, so my only thing is I kind of feel like I wouldn't want to spend 4 XP and only use this once. So I think I would really look at that skill card that we just got oh, that yeah. lets you take a spell from the discard. Yeah, Prescient from the Jacqueline deck, yeah. So I would be looking at cards like that, um, and I don't know if there's any other cards off the top of my head, but to me... I would sort of want to use this twice, uh, or at least have the ability to, like some game. Um, but but yeah, it's it's quite powerful. Yeah, I think I'm a lot happier to have this in my deck than the original recharge because spending XP for something that might might not only fail but actively sabotage you uh, always felt like a pretty big risk. Uh, but this one, because it's all upside, I think it it feels a lot more playable to me. Yeah, I, I agree. I didn't think the original recharge was really worth the XP. Yeah, and I, I've said this before. I think I said it on the last video. I am a player who likes to let it roll a little bit and likes to roll the dice a little bit. So I have played recharge <laughs> a decent amount. But this one, it just seems substantially better. So I'm excited for this. Yep. Uh, okay, what do we got next? Uh, Azure Flame level five. Oh, there it is. Uh, <laughs> Three cost, uh, same icons as Shriveling 5 with the will and two fists. Four charges, fights, uses will, you get plus three and deal two damage. Uh, and if a good token is revealed, you take two damage. So it's Shriveling 5, except that you get two damage instead of two horror. Um, shriveling 5 is a very powerful card, but with a pretty substantial downside. Like... Mm -hmm. Definitely, I have lost, you know, I've died because of that two horror. Because that two horror at a time, yeah. And two damage is no joke for Mystic. So uh, I think this goes well into that kind of bag manipulation side where you ideally never have to take the two damage. Um, and hopefully you're playing Robes of Endless Night so that if even if you do take the two right. damage, you can <laughs> soak one of them. Um, Aside from the downside, I mean, three damage weapons are always really good. There's a lot of three hit point enemies in this game. Yep. Yep. Completely agree. And I mean, this is all in the Jacqueline box. I think this one, and I, like, I would kind of say the same about Shriveling 5, but I think this is a good Jacqueline card, not as good for everyone else, because she can just control whether she takes that damage so much more. She can, she is a lot less likely to get those backfires. And I kind of love the the decision that this can give you. Well, you know what? Never mind. Okay, I was gonna say that it gives you an. It might give you an interesting decision where it's like, do I take the plus one and do deal all this damage and take damage, or do I fail the test? Right. Like, but considering this is giving you plus three willpower, like, <laughs> as long as you're not drawing the auto fail, you're probably passing yeah. the test. <laughs> <laughs> so all you've really got to do is avoid these to these tokens and get anything but these. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, similarly, Clairvoyance level 5 is next in the pack. It is a 4-cost level 5 asset, uses 3 charges, and it investigates for plus 3 willpower, 2 additional clues, and 2 horror if you draw the Elder Sign the plus 1 or the 0. So again, it's it's another. It seems like maybe all three of these spells are going to have this third step of their upgrade path. Hmm. So upgrading Rite of Seeking doesn't add any downside, right? Because you can't really get worse than lose all your actions and end your turn. Like that doesn't scale up. Yeah. So the the best Rite of Seeking is four cost and or five cost four XP. So kind of reverse mm -hmm. there. Uh, it gives you only two will, and it does do the two additional clues. Uh, but yeah, the downside is still just lose all your actions. Yeah, so I think I'm more excited about upgrading Right of Seeking than I am this. That said, I still, and I said this in the last video, I'm still not sure how I feel until I play with like 
do I like these ones that backfire on the good tokens or the ones that backfire on the bad tokens? So that might, mm-hmm. that kind of once I experiment with this and, and see what that means for the way my game unfolds, I, I think I'll have a better idea of how I feel about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, one more card. All right. Uh, Ineffable Truth level five, cost three, uses three charges. Uh, spend a charge, uses will instead of agility, you get plus three will, and if you succeed, deal two damage to the evaded enemy, uh, and if any of the good tokens are revealed, lose two resources. This one kind of seems weird, because, like, now that you're dealing two damage, like, why are we even, like, pretending this is an evade card? It's, like, basically just, like, shriveling. I mean, it's kind of like shriveling with the upside of on bad enemies, it also evades them. <laughs> right? True. Like, this actually seems pretty awesome to me. Yeah, so I guess really the comparison to this is with shriveling or Azure Flame 3, because they're mm. both like ways to, do teal- to deal two damage that boost your will a good amount. Um, so well, this one, oh, yeah, okay. So it's like, do you want to spend more XP to also evade them? uh, Or do you want to spend two less XP to deal two damage with a good will bonus and not evade them? Right. Or there's room in your deck for both. (laughs) Um... Yeah, I think that this is probably the best of these level 5 cards. And I think part of that is, in addition to the combination of evading and dealing two damage, I think just being uh, better than dealing three damage is. Um, losing two resources is not as bad a penalty as taking two damage or two horror, right? You can play around that by emptying out your, your resource pool, and it's not go- you're not going to die from it. <laughs> hmm. See, I actually think this is the worst. Uh, really? To, yeah, to me, spending two XP additional for, like, evading after I deal two damage, like, I just don't feel like most of the time I can't, like, if I'm going to be dealing that kind of damage, I'm just going to kill it. Like, I, to me, it's like a pretty marginal, like, benefit. I don't know, for, for a level 5 card, like, it's not like you're grabbing it scenario 2. You're, you're late in the campaign where you're probably fighting big bosses, big enemies. I think that the, the use case for dealing 2 damage and evading is, I think it's going to be more common than you're giving it credit for. It's also the only three charges, like spend it, like mm. the the attack spells normally have four charges. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, but l- a- another interesting thing to compare this to is hypnotic gaze, which is well, okay, it it, it actually it doesn't evade, so it's not it, it just pr- cancels an attack. So I guess it's not as apples to apples, but um doing this three times two damage and evading compared to like hypnotic A's, it's a couple it's a few more xp but i think that's i mean hypnotic gaze has never been a good card so maybe level two hypnotic gaze is just also not that good but i don't know i think i see this as to me one of the most exciting upgrades in this pack like that and recharge i think are the two that i'm i look at and like oh i would play that in lots of mystic decks I don't think too many of these other upgrades rise to that level for me. Maybe Robes of Endless Night, level 2. That's about it. The other thing is, Evasion does have special rules that make it kind of annoying. Like, you have to be engaged to evade. Yeah. Uh, So it's not as flexible as fighting. Uh, Good point. Yeah, you, you cannot evade something that someone else is engaged with, so it's a little tougher for, like, teaming up on a boss together. You also can't easily fire this off multiple times if you wanted to use it for six damage to an enemy. That's not an option. Uh, at least not in only three actions. Yeah. Pros and cons. Um, hmm. It's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. I'm really interested to try that one. I, I might come back eating. I, I don't think that we have any system in place like we do for the Mythos packs to like revisit these at the start of the next one. <laughs> but <laughs> I might eat my words on this one, but I, I think it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was it that's that's the uh, across our last two videos that is the Jacqueline pack um, I counted after we logged off last time and it was 10 new cards in her original deck and this is uh, 5 10 
13, so 23 new player cards, two copies of each in this, uh, is a huge burst of cards. I just think that if you are like you and me, who have, uh, what do we have, 40, 50 expansions for Arkham Horror in the card game yeah. already? <laughs> Most of these don't rise to the level of particularly exciting. But, you know, I'm, st I'm still glad to have it, and I'm excited to play Jacqueline herself. Yeah, I mean, from the previews I've seen, I feel like the other ones are maybe a bit more new themes. Um, with Mystics, like, we already did have, like, the All of McBride deck, so mm -hmm. it's this isn't a totally new theme. Um, it's true. Jacqueline doesn't do something that is new to Mystics. Right? Like, there have always been lots of Mystic cards that are about draw several tokens and choose. That's that's nothing new. So that's a good point. And I don't... Man, I, I paid attention to the reveals of these investigators and have not looked at them since. So I remember, I think, what the Guardian does, and that's it. So... <laughs> yeah, so like, I don't... like, what, what Nathaniel Cho does is so different from yeah. any Guardian. Like, right, right. he has mano play. a mano, and it was terrible, and there was nothing else like that. Like, yep. Yep. So yeah, that's true. Maybe there's a lot more potential. Maybe we we did not pick. Uh, maybe we did not pick the showstopper to start with. But <laughs> yeah, you know, you gotta you gotta build up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's uh, hopefully the rest of these packs have some real new territory explored. Um, although it also is fine if that's not what these packs do, because their audience is for kind of the the less initiated or the l smaller collection player. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely excited to see. Yeah. Uh, okay, with that, thank you for watching. Steven, thank you for being here. Yeah. And um, so this was video two out of ten. Uh, we touched on this last video, but uh, we're shooting to release two videos a week, but they will not be ten consecutive Arkham videos. We do have some other cool stuff kind of in the queue on Optimal Play that we're putting out as well, but... Uh, please subscribe if you want to make sure that you see the next videos as they come out. Uh, this is going to keep us busy up until Innsmouth and, I think, Barkham Horror, which is actually, I'm not planning to play Arkham Horror anymore when that comes out. So uh, that's that's the real thing I'm excited about. Um, all that <laughs> coming up in these few weeks that are about to pretty much kill us, getting this all up. So, uh, yeah. What, what do you think Jacqueline Fine's dog name will be? Or what it should it be? Ooh. Hmm. Um. Like, I don't have a good. I don't have a good pun for Jacqueline, but something it's wine. Like Jack Russell, but like. Oh, like Jack. Jacqueline Russell wine. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Barkland I love. Fine. Barkland fine. <laughs> oh man, I love the question, but I wish I was coming up with a better answer. Hmm. We'll ha we'll have to do our homework next time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I w I won't let this happen again. <laughs> All right. Well, that's <laughs> that's a great note to end on. <laughs> have a good night, Stephen. Thank you for watching. Until next time, be optimal. See it.